I had a wonderful, wonderful time. Now, one question I always ask myself is, what did I learn exactly? And um, I don't think I learned um, much new, but I'm, that's not a criticism. Uh, what I did like quite a bit, and I mean, the not learning stuff it has to do with the fact that I, as you know, have been part of these conversations through mind and life and my, some of my own research and work. What I thought was terrific was the bringing in of new people to conversations that have been going on with, the, with in some way, the concern being that there's uh, too much repetition of the same people. Now, I'm one of the same people, um, but at least I see that there's been expansion to um, uh, you know, new people. But one thing I would say is that it's still too Buddhist uh, for me, but I thought that came up helpfully in some of the discussions um, about where we go from here. I mean, I thought T. Rockwell's idea of, um, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, Anne's um, comments about um, expansiveness. I mean, one, one problem, I'll shut up in one second on this point, that we saw at the meetings in Washington when we looked around, uh, as usual, there's one or two black persons. Uh, uh, in the audience, it, 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 there's an interesting question here. I mean, about how one—I mean, that's that's that community. There's some hook, and everybody will benefit. But I'm not sure how it is. There are plenty of uh, uh, black intellectuals, um, and there are divinity schools and things like that. The question is just how to bring them in. I think that's a disturbing uh, idea that we, there's an all-white. Um, more or less conversation, except for the Tibetans. It is true that the, um, the in terms of the makeup of the uh, discussants, the, um, yeah, except for uh, Jinpa, I mean, um, uh, almost all the, uh, you know, uh, conversants are more American, I guess, without exception. Well, a couple of Europeans, um, but, um, or um, uh, North Americans. Um, the, so the answer is, in one sense, uh, I felt that I was engaging again uh, with uh, perspectives from different traditions, uh, in part because of the extraordinary expertise. I mean, we're talking about people, in many cases, like George Dreyfus et al., who were um, uh, uh, monks uh, living in other parts of the world for 15 years or so. Uh, a very wise Dutch friend of mine uh, often points out the difference between converts and um, uh, the original people, and I noticed some differences there. I mean, I think that's someone like Alan Wallace, for example. His um, his view of things is uh, so obviously influenced by his Christian father, theologian, as well as this, and I, and, and I, he does, doesn't always sort of isn't always clear about that. So I feel like I'm in the presence of someone who's very much like myself comes from similar roots and things like that. So that's another, it's a good question about if we're gonna do more mind and reality conferences um, uh, to do them uh, perhaps with much more of an international. Now the question is, are we talking European international uh, or um, uh, bringing people from uh, other countries here? I mean, could there be, um, I mean, you know, the obvious presence if one were to go with the Buddhist connection is to go think of Thailand and Sri Lanka or India or places like that. Um, if one were to go want to have, um, uh, go outside of Buddhism to contemplative traditions or even non-contemplative traditions, just practices which are, have conceptions of human flourishing and ethical life, one could go every, anywhere, you know, Africa or you name it. I thought it was wonderful uh, um, I, I, I really appreciated, um, this has to do with my American philosopher of mind colleagues who uh, knew nothing about these conversations, how easily, um, and although I, I know, for example, Bob Van Gulik to be a wonderful conversant uh, person and, and open-minded, um, but I think it, it's instructive uh, just to see how Ned Block, Susan Carey, um, uh, and um, uh, uh, Teed Rockwell is exceptional a little bit because he's very interested in Indian philosophy, but not, not, didn't know much about Buddhism before. But that our conversations in Western analytic philosophy about self, personhood, and so on, uh, really do, uh, they resonated for the philosophers. It wasn't just people being sort of uh, curious and nice. I mean, I think there's 
uh, like I've seen over the past 10 years of my own work, uh, boy, this is interesting. This is very interesting. I thought also, um, I thought Jay Garfield, um, as a person who is one of the most eminently trained people in both analytic philosophy and in um, uh, knows so much about uh, Buddhism, um, I thought he gave a wonderful, uh, to me, cautionary um, address about uh, being careful about where you're coming from in terms of, um, uh, I mean, I'm not sure what Garfield's rule would be. Is it uh, be aware of what conceptual apparatus or model you're bringing to your discussion of any other tradition, um, or uh, don't bring any at all? I don't think I don't think Jay could have meant that, and I'm interested uh, uh, to ask him more about that because you just can't do it that way. You have to bring some uh, interpretive tool. Uh, and, but we, we do need to be aware of bringing our own interpretive tradition and say, well, since we have these three traditions, Kantianism, utilitarianism, and virtue theory, which one or which of combinations of those were they doing? They might be doing something completely different. And I thought Jay's, I thought, I thought that the, um, uh, I thought both Bob Pollock and Jay gave wonderful complimentary presentations. And I did like the moment at which Jay said, from the Buddhist perspective, everything is suffering in Pollock, and, and he pointed out that Pollock had basically said, from a certain Abramonic perspective, the problem, including science in the discussion, is how to understand purposefulness and meaning in the face of a purposeless world. And that's... Um